Thanks for joining us for another Oilfield Basics video blog. My name is Sebastian Jaya, and we here at Oilfield Basics are trying to build the go-to educational platform for the oil and gas industry. There are so many awesome topics to cover, and if you like what we're doing or find this video helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share this with someone you think could benefit from our material. Today, we're going to talk about what in the world scale is, the different types of scale, why they can decrease production of your wells, and lastly, some remediation techniques that are seen to be useful and effective in our industry. So let's dive in. So let's first discuss what in the world scale is. Scale bearing water is prominent throughout the shale plays, and as the fields age and the wells decline, dissolved salts can precipitate out of the water due to temperature and pressure changes, which can cause scaling throughout your well and even on in your surface equipment. The dissolved salts attach to the seal casing and tubing very well, and over time, if not treated or dealt with, it can build up essentially choking your well. And so some common types of scale you could find in the oil field are calcium carbonates, iron sulfides, and barium sulfates. Each type of scale has different characteristics, such as hardness, composition, and color. And so as you can see uh, from these two images, the top one is a picture of a cutaway of tubing, um, and you can see it's a whiter color uh, scale. And so this is indicative of a calcium carbonate scale. And Below here, you have a picture of actual tubing um, that I took a picture of during one of my internships. And as you can see, there's a lot of corrosion and uh, what we call an industry pin damage on the tubing. We're not going to go into great detail with that. But on the inside, you can see a little bit of scale buildup. And it's a little darker scale, which is indicative of a uh, barium sulfate. And so there's all these different types of scale. They all build up over time due to temperature and pressure changes. Um, but really, you can't. Uh, distinguish what they are until you actually see it in person and you, you know be able to feel it feel the roughness and even look under a microscope to figure out the composition of it so now where can scaling occur scale can be found in the perforations and so when your uh, perforations are actually producing the oil and gas and the water from the reservoir these are the entry points into the well and so scale can occur right then and there at those perforations even blocking them off which is which is worst case scenario because you just spent millions of dollars of capital and investment creating those perforations with completions. And so having them blocked off is not what you want to see. And so you want to really hope that that's not happening. But you could also find scale in your production casing itself. And so in today's times, that'll be your lateral, the horizontal part of your well bore. And you can find uh, scaling there, which is also not very good because that's where all your oil and gas is traveling up to the vertical portion of the well bore and up into surface. And so you just want your well bore to be cleared. Uh, it could also occur in the tubing. Tubing, as you know from um, our other video, distinguishing between casing and tubing, is the lower diameter pipe, which is installed to help alleviate uh, liquid loading, and it helps bring you know liquids to surface to help produce gas. And there's a lot of scaling that can occur in the tubing because of the large pressure change that you see there. Um, even at the perf sub, which is the end of tubing, is basically what all of your oil and gas flows into and then into your tubing. That location is prominent to have a lot of scaling just because of those pressure changes, um, temperature changes, and that's just where the dissolved salts like to precipitate and attach into your into your um, steel casing and tubing. And lastly, you can even see scaling all the way up on surface in your surface equipment. You have a lot of, you know, in some processes and some basins, you could have a lot of processing equipment on the well pad itself, which you're creating artificial pressure changes and artificial temperature changes. And all of these can contribute to scaling on surface and thus resulting in kind of equipment failure and plugging off certain types of um, pipes and equipment. But it all depends on the amount of uh, hydrates and salts that you have in the reservoir because if you have not a lot, of, if the water that you're producing um, along with your oil and gas is you know clean and doesn't have a lot of hydrates and salts, then there's a very small chance that scale will occur in your well. But if your water is very dirty, as they say in the industry, has a lot of hydrates and salts, then there's a very good chance that scaling can occur just due to the slightest amount of pressure changes or the slightest temperature change. And I just want to note something important is that scaling in dry gas wells is quite rare due to the lack of water being produced from dry gas wells. Scaling is most prominent in wet gas wells, condensate wells, and oil wells. The main issues that arise from scaling is the decrease of your well's production. If scaling occurs in the production casing of your well, which is your lateral, then it will be noted by your production falling off in proportion to your casing pressure. And so I try to draw a production graph here over time. And so on the y-axis, we have pressure slash production. 
and on your x-axis we have time and so over time as you see your production will decrease and then begin to plateau and i'll be the same thing with your casing pressure at one point once scale starts to uh, build up in your lateral and in your um, casing then your production will start to decrease in proportion to your casing pressure so both will start to fall off and i've seen this happen over months over years just slowly ticking down but even sometimes within a few days you know within a few days your well could go from producing uh, 500 mcf per day all the way to zero you know i've seen it seen it happen and so it just depends on your formation and your reservoir characteristics on how quickly how quickly that could develop and so this is kind of a side view of the lateral portion of the well you have your casing your cement your well bore itself and then this is kind of a very uniform and nice picture of scale which is not what it looks like at all but as you can see it you know decreases the diameter of your pipe it could close off perforations and thus decreasing the production of your wells so what are some common remediation techniques to remove scale from your well bore well, if you believe you have scale in your lateral, noted by your gas production falling down as well as your casing pressure, then there's a good chance that it's you know in your lateral and you have to do something to get that get rid of that. And so, most commonly, you will have a workover rig come on location. The workover rig will um, rig up to the well. It will remove the tubing out of the well and then run a bit all the way to the bottom, removing all the scale that's within your lateral. And this is basically the most guaranteed way of removing scale because you're running a physical bit to bottom. You're seeing your returns. You've got you know a measured depth of where your bit is, and once you hit the once you hit your total depth, your TD, then basically you know you know that there's no more scale within the lateral. That you basically drilled it all out, and that your well could be um, put on back to production at full volume. And this is just an image of that occurring with a workable rig. Another new uh, kind of technique that I've seen occur is the lateral acid drops and so there's good chances that you could pump large amounts of acid specifically hydrochloric acid um, with some inhibitors and this can be done to remove the scale depending on the location of the scale in the lateral you know if your scale is in the toe of the lateral which is the the end of your lateral then it'll be a lot harder for your acid to reach that location but if it's in the heel then there's a good chance you could pump large amounts of acid and hopefully dissolve that scale also, if you have scaling with your tubing, it's very common to not have to replace your tubing every time. You could simply pump a few hundred gallons of acid and hope that that dissolves the scale within your tubing. You could also pump scale inhibitors down your tubing or the backside of your tubing, um, along with like a foamer that you have to help with liquid loading. This could, this could help uh, prevent scaling or help stop it from growing. And so that's very, it's a very reactive kind of technique. Um, I mean, all of these are but you don't really know your scale until you start seeing it or you start seeing that production decline. And lastly, there's something called a polymer gel squeeze. And so if you've done several workovers and you've tagged scale in this same location several times, then it's very probable that those few perforations or that part of the reservoir is producing all of your scale bearing water. And sometimes it'd be economical to pump a gel squeeze, which will pump this gel slash cement slurry into those few perforations, just blocking them off because you'd rather block off those few perforations and not produce from them anymore because in the long run, you're not gonna to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to clean out and bring a workable rig and drill out, drill out that scale consistently. And so this is common in wells that develop scale um, very consistently and every few months because just other economics that come with it. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you learned what in the world scale is finally. Um, I hope you learned the different types of scale, how scaling occurs in your well where it can be found, um, you know, why your production decreases. And also I hope you learn um, some remediation techniques to, to uh, deal with scale and to remove the scale from your well. Because ideally we all want our wells to produce as much as possible and we don't want something like scale to hinder that. And so I hope this video helps you with that and gives you some new insights on scale. So with that being said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to our channels for future videos and check out our online courses at oilfieldbasics.com slash learn to learn more about the entire drilling process, designing of a well, completions, production, and scale, and, and more. And so, you know, be sure to check us out. Be sure to find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, and we'll see you in the next video.